Hello, and if this is your first time, welcome to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. Welcome back to any of, of my other subscribers. Uh, thank you for stopping by the channel again. I've been away for about a month. I've been sick and then busy after that, so I'm back in better health and ready to get started again. So, as you can see, today I'm going to be showing you how to make custom graduation announcements or graduation invitations. Um, these are some of the ones that I've made in the past. Um, the one here in the top is a half fold, which is made with two sheets, and even though it's just colored, don't mind that this is a was a picture of an actual one and so the camera just made it look weird here at the top but um this is the half fold uh card or an announcement or invitation and this goes in an envelope that it usually says computer generated cards when you buy the envelopes from office depot or or walmart but it fits a folded letter page which is um eight and a half by eleven sheet uh the outer portion is made with a photo car uh, with a photo paper and then the insert or the inside is a sheet of either multi multi-purpose paper or inkjet paper this one i made to fit the number 10 envelope which is something in the area of nine four and a quarter by nine and three eighths or the your average uh letter envelope but this one i made by just dividing the page into three sections so i put was able to put three invitations on one sheet of photo paper and then all of these at the bottom which are the most popular as you can see um are made with five, four by six photo paper um, and they fit a four by six envelope which I used to get when I made these um, I got the invitations at I mean the envelopes at Walmart they used to give them away for free if you went and printed them there and that was the reason why I would go and print them there so that I could get the free envelopes I'm not sure that they're still doing that um, but they are available to order to fit four by six style so I'm going to go here to file. I'm going to choose new. I'm going to go down to four by six after clicking on click a proportion. Slide down to four by six and hit done. So this is my four by six um, photo. This will be my four by six photo paper. This will be printed on. And I'm going to show you. I like to. Um, make the logos on the invitations look a bit more fancy than as you can see i like to metallicize them so that they look more fancy rather than just being you know the matte colors so i'm going to show you how i do that so i'm going to use this i'm going to use this fictitious school logo that i put together just for this tutorial and i want to change this to the metallic look so i'm going to go to cut out in picture cut out of picture by color selection and i'm going to click on all the areas that are the same color i think i'm going to leave this out for now i might change it later but i might just leave it like it is so i'm going to go to next and you can see the bold color is what will be saved so as you can see this black and the color on the bird is is uh, the dark color on the bird is what selected I'm gonna click done and so now you'll see here on the right hand side I have two layers now I'm gonna go back in to that same function and I'm gonna choose the red so I'm gonna go to cut out in picture cut out of picture by color selection and this time I'm just gonna click on all the red areas and I'm going to click next and you can see that the red is the, the color that stands out and I'm going to click done so now I have the three layers cut out here and 
I want to make a copy of this by going to cut out in picture, cut out of picture with a cookie cutter shape because when I change the layers in this picture to the metallicized colors, I want them to still look as close to the original colors as I can. So now you could see that this one has three different sections and this one has just one. So this is just a copy of the entire picture. So now that I have my, my copy here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose the red by left clicking. I'm going to go to paint and color effects. And once again, you won't see this menu, but you'll see this menu on your screen, but you're not seeing it on mine. But I'm going to the second row. It's a starfish with a rainbow pattern and it's filled with a gradient is what uh, function we just use. So now I'm going to come here and these are some, some looks like gray bars. So I'm just going to click that and I'm going to click done. Now I'm going to choose the black area, which is the black layer. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to a special, uh, paint and color effects, fill with the gradient. And I'm going to choose those same gray uh, bars. So I'm going to click on the bird first, the red portion. I'm going to go to, to touch up. And on this one, it's the first, the third one in the first row, which is correct tint. And I'm just going to either drag this slider over because it was already in red. And as you can see, this kind of already looks like that color. Or I can drag this little ball around to get it to the exact uh, color that I want. And you can take this around. As you can see, it can make any color combination you can think of. So I'm going to set it back so that it looks close to the same hue as this red. And then I can drag this over a little to 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 make it a little more bold and I'm going to click done now we're going to adjust this more by going back to paint and color effects but this time we're going to change color so now I want to try to get this hue to look more like this uh, color so I'm going to go here to the first uh, box with this little up and down slider and I'm going to click on down to darken it because I can look at it automatically until it's going to need to be darker to match with that color. I took it down a little too much. And then you can also adjust it by sliding the ball here. And as you can see, that's getting a little closer. I'm going to click on the middle um, section here that uh, controls saturation. And I'm just going to click a few until it brings up that color and I'm trying to match it by just eyeballing it. You can't use your dropper because it won't it won't uh, be able to adjust it exactly. You could try the dropper and get it close and then fine tune it. But I'm just going to do it on my own. So I'm just going to keep increasing that intensity and it's getting closer to that color. Well, I wanted this to look like that color if it were a metallic. So now I think I need to darken it a little more. And I think that's pretty close. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. Now for this outer ring, I might change the, the pattern. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and go into... Uh, paint and color effects change color and since it's already silver to make it black all I have to do is bring down this first bo box which is uh, brightness or darkness and I'm just going to bring it down until I get it won't I don't want to make it completely black because then you won't get the metallic metallic effect so I'm just going to bring it down pretty close well let me see yeah that's pretty good and then I'm going to go into special, uh, not special effects, touch up, 
brightness and contrast and I'm gonna see if taking down the brightness here will still keep yeah it's still keeping my metallic look and I'm just going to continue bringing this down so that to me uh, it looks a little better than just the flat plane one for the graduation announcement it just looks a little fancier I think I need to add a little more red to this so I'm going to go back in here and I'm just going to drag this over to the red a little more that's too much but it had a little too much orange in it I'm going to darken it just a little bit and like I said this is this is all just adjusting it by kind of eyeballing it all right I think that looks much better okay so now I can go ahead and delete this one because I've already changed uh, my picture here now I could have done the white as well and gave it a silverish white look but I think I'll just leave it like it is so now so that I won't have to deal with all these layers and forget when I'm trying to move it around and they separate I'm just gonna do the same thing I'm gonna make a copy of this by just going to cut out in picture cut out of picture with a cookie cutter shape and I'm just using the square to cut the picture to make my copy then I'm just going to delete this one okay so now I have my logo okay so I'm using this picture that I just googled on YouTube for a royalty free high res 18 year old uh, and this is the picture I found and I'm going to bring back up that 4 by 6 page that we're doing our announcement on and at this point you can you can either mimic their actual graduation cards or you can do something original so what I'm going to do I'll bring up her picture and I'm gonna crop her out a little more by going to cut out in picture cut out of picture with cookie cutter shape and I'm going to make it more of a well, I guess I can just put it right to the edge of her clothing I think I'm going to bring this in a little bit there we go and I'm going to hit next and done and delete this picture keep that one and this time I'm going to the, the third picture in the first row and it says add a colored shape and it's an orange looks like an orange apple next to two oranges so you click that one change this to the square I'm gonna change it to I can leave it blue because I'm gonna change it to the black color here anyway I guess I'll go ahead and make it black and then hit done and done again and I'm going to just drag that black square <clears throat> underneath my teenager and make a black frame around her by just eyeballing to see if I can get it to be about the same distance around I think I'll make it thinner since she already has a black background a white background I don't have to add in that additional background actually I can because I can add a red one so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make it a little thicker and then I'm going to while I have this black chosen I'm going to hit copy which is the two pages here at the top and paste and then I'm going to change that to the red in my logo And I think I'm going to go in and metallicize these. Once again, I'm going to drag this red layer down under her picture. And I'm going to just put it in so that it's just an edge of it showing all the way around. Thinner than the first one. And I like the way that looks. So now I'm going to go in 
once again to I clicked on the the red level and I'm gonna go to paint and color effect fill with the gradient I'm gonna go to the gray again but this time I'm gonna choose the pinpoint and it's gonna give it a little bit of a different look now I'm going to go to special effect um, sorry touch up correct tint and I'm going to try to make that frame look like it's the same color as the bird I'm gonna hit done and then I'm gonna go to paint and color effects change color and I'm gonna adjust the color from here making it darker taking it over to the orange a little bit and I'm just gonna get it as close to that one the one next to it as I can I'm just gonna work with it until it looks like it and I could probably get away with it just about right there but I want to make it a little a little more uh, saturated because see with it being a distance you really can't even tell that it's not exactly the same uh, tint but I'm going to crease it a bit more and that that looks pretty good to me if it if it starts looking weird I'll go back and change it in a bit I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the outer uh, frame I'm gonna go to uh, paint and color effect fill with gradient choose the gray bars go all the way down and choose the point with the spiral hit done go to paint and color effect change color and I'm just gonna click down on the brightness button until it gets dark and then I'll finish it up if it doesn't get dark enough here which it doesn't then I'm gonna go into touch up brightness and contrast and just drag the brightness toward the left until it looks like it's about the same darkness as my um, oval around the logo and that works so now I also like to put a shadow on the outer edge to make it to make the logo um, just look like it has some depth to it so I'm going to click on the logo I'm going to go to special effects shadow which is the second choice in the top row and then I'm going to choose let me see how I like the soft shadow sometime when I put the soft shadow on it looks kind of raggedy around the edge but that doesn't look bad and you can see the shadow you can resize it make it smaller or larger you can offset it um, just by clicking on it and holding it and dragging it either around in the picture or you can drag it by these um, quadrant markers so I think I'm going to take it about right there I'm going to sharpen it a little bit by clicking on customize the shadow and on this shadow you can make it more transparent if it's too dark or you can make the edge softer or harder by moving to the left it gives it a harder edge by moving to the right it gives it a softer edge and as you can see it gives it a very soft edge there but I don't want it that soft I want it to be a little harder so pretty much I'm back where I started I guess I like that one at first and we can do the same thing with her frame I'm going to first make sure that this is pretty much the same distance away from the red frame all the way around just by eyeballing and you'll see me do that a lot and I think it needs to come over that looks pretty good actually so I'm gonna go ahead uh, that's what I, I'll do I will put a shadow around her so I'm gonna click on her picture special effect shadow I'm gonna choose that soft one again and I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit so that you could see that shadow comes around the edge it just just I think it just makes it look better and like I said it gives it a little depth I do need to come in a little bit on this red and I think that's it so I'm going to go ahead and any go anywhere from the top of the picture and I'm just going to choose all her layers and I can put them in one 
If I'm satisfied with that and don't think I'm going to need to do anything with it, I will make it easier on my old software and go to cut out, um, cut out in picture, cut out of picture with the cookie cutter shape. And I will just cut this out and then I can delete all the layers with the frame and her picture by itself. So I'm going to click done. So now I have a copy instead of the free three layers here and I'm going to delete this one and keep this. So now all we need to do is come up with a design that we want for our invitation and I didn't think of one in advance so I'm just going to I think I will copy one of these let's see uh, okay I'll do it like this one uh, this one is pretty easy to follow um, and all all you would have to do is make squares and then put her um, logo and the information about the graduation here so as a matter of fact I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to undelete those layers because I can use them for the rest of this uh, invitation so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just delete her picture on it but I'm gonna keep this portion so that I can make it look like the invitation with the square so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this red square down and take it across just like this I'll bring it down a bit more and I'm going to refer to it because it's been a while since I made that one. Okay. And then I'm going to bring her picture. I'll leave it on this side. Make it a little different. I'll leave her picture here. I'm going to bring this black across. Bring my logo to the front. Put it right here. Let me bring this red down some because I want it right at the base. Then I'm just going to take a white square by going to cut out in picture. Cut, um, add a colored shape. I'm going to change it to a white square by just clicking on the white here because it was already a square. And then I'm going to put this over here next to her. And this is where you would put the announcement information. Once I get it to the same thickness as her picture, I'm going to bring my logo back to the top by clicking on it in the right hand corner with the left button and dragging it back to the top. And I can shrink this down some because I want to add in. And you could put it here or, or you can move it anywhere you want. Um, I think I'll put it this way and then I'll put 2000 over there so I'm gonna go to text add text box and actually I like this font this is nice and chunky and shows up really well and I'm gonna change that to 2020 click done enlarge it a bit and let me look at my example again and refresh my memory so I just put the year and then all the information there okay so with that one I put the the logo here and the year there and actually I'll still like that so I think I'll stick with it so I'm going to enlarge this a little bit more put this here and then you could either use um, the information, let me line this up correctly, it's still not quite even with that, with her picture, and her picture needs to come over a little bit, so that it's lined up with the red. So I'm just making these minor adjustments that I just noticed as I was working with it 
I will have it adjusted soon. Which one am I pulling? Oh, I see. I need to drop the red down some. To right there. Yes, and then bring the white down some. So, if you're not very good at eyeballing, which seems like I'm not today, you can go to size and position, alignment grids, which is, which is the last choice. Choose horizontal if you need a line going in this direction, which is the one I need. I'm going to drop that line down there, and then I'm going to take, take it to the bottom of her picture, and then this will tell will be able to put my black edge once I hit done I'm gonna bring my black edge to the top well underneath that white level and now I can snap it up to the line and they will be on the same same line so that I don't have to worry about one being lower than the other one And now I'm just going to resize my white layer here. And then you can click on this line and move it out of the way. I need to move this over some so that it's not on her frame. About right right there I think I resized that a little bit just a alright so now you have your announcement set you can um, make this white and then come back in with a black layer so I'll uh, I'll make the I'll copy this by going to copy paste I'm gonna make this one white hit done I'm gonna bring it down underneath the black and just give it the two-tone look you could also make this 2020 metallic by going to paint and and color effects fill with the gradient choose those bars I like the shiny metallic with stars here so I'll choose that then I'm going to go to paint and color effect change color take this all the way down Get it to black again and then go into touch up brightness and contrast and take it down more in there all right and you have just made a graduation announcement so now to finish off the invitation I went to the internet and I just simply searched for uh, graduation announcement messages free and I found quite a few but I chose this one and what I did was I divided it into three text boxes all you do is copy the text from the page on the internet and then create a text box by going to text add a text it will show up like this you just highlight the writing here and paste in the writing that you want to add hit done resize it as I did here and then we're going to group these together and put them in the box now for her name I wanted the reason why I separated the box I'll get rid of this one at the bottom but the reason why I separated this into three sections if it's difficult for you you could leave it all as one message 
but I wanted to highlight her name by putting it in the Amazon text like I did when I added when I um I'm going to add right here class of above the 20 20 so I'm going to go to text add text I'm going to change my font to Amazon by scrolling up a bit Amazon bold text I'm going to take the italicies off because it's already italicized a bit I'm going to type class of and you don't have to add this but it just might make it look a little better I think so I'm just going to bring it down above the 2020 you can actually have it overlapping if you want but I'm going to make it small and bring it above the 2020 put it right in the middle if you want or you can offset it I've done it both ways I'm going to shrink this down a little bit more then I'm going to go to special effect shadow and add a slight drop shadow just to make it stand out a little more I'm going to drop it down into the left and you see it just makes it stand out a bit make it stand out a bit more and next I'm going to just group my message that I found on the internet so that it's just one box make trying to make sure that everything is even I think this needs to come this way a little bit and now I'm just going to group all of these by dragging from the top right all the way to the bottom uh, from the top left all the way to the bottom right or you could do from the bottom right all the way to the top left and then click this little puzzle piece to group it now I'm going to go back up to my invitation and I'm going to drag in the message and drop it right here okay I think I want to resize it a little bit more in here so I'm going to group it again and I'm just going to enlarge it a bit so that it fills more of the space and you have just learned how to create a custom designed invitation or grad announcement for any graduate you can use this for um, junior high school through college you can add any type of extra elements you want to make it stand out and I also as you can see I added the red frame around the the white rectangle at first I had this just solid black but I wanted to make it mirror her picture so I added that for just an extra bit of color now you have your com completely completed announcement or you can make it into an invitation and I am going to be making um, a one that's a little more difficult actually it's just a few more steps um, so it, I'd give it a little bit more degree of difficulty to show you how I made some of the other designs and also I would love to see any designs that you might come up with um, I'd love to see your work to see um, if if these tutorials are actually helping you to expand your inventory for your businesses or or if you're making them for family or friends or yourself so feel free to share those with me through messenger on Facebook most of you have contacted me in order to get the software and I guess I should add once again if anyone is new to the channel if you'd like to get the software that I'm using um, contact me on Facebook at Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus and I will send you the free link to download the software so that you can design right along with me once again thank you for stopping by Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus I will see you again next time